Hello, and welcome to Power Hungry Garage. Today we're going to cover the installation of our new hydro chip into a 2001 Ford F-250 Super Duty with a 7.3 liter Power Stroke diesel. The installation should only take about 30 minutes and requires only a few simple hand tools. To start with, you'll need a quarter inch ratchet with a 10 millimeter, a 7 millimeter, and a 5.5 millimeter socket. You may also want to go to your local hardware store and buy a small brass toothbrush, although that isn't really necessary. The chip does come with a piece of Scotch-Brite, which is more than adequate for cleaning the connector on the ECM. So, let's go ahead and get the computer out of the truck. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the connector from the vehicle's computer. You're going to use your 10 millimeter socket, and the connector for the computer is located up here against the firewall, about two inches away from the fender. You can't really get a straight shot at it, but if you just slip your arm down in there, you can feel the connector and the 10 millimeter nut that's right in the middle of it. Just slide your quarter inch ratchet on there and go ahead and start to disconnect it. So now that we've got our connector under the hood removed, we're going to go ahead and remove the computer from underneath the dash. The computer is located on the driver's side right next to the emergency brake and it's held in a black plastic case with two small 7 millimeter screws. We're going to use our quarter inch ratchet to go ahead and remove those two screws and then we'll slide the computer case out from underneath the dash. Okay, so now that we've got our bolts removed from the computer, we're going to go ahead and slide the computer out from under the dash. Now to do that, you're going to want to grab the back of the computer case and push it to the right towards the brake pedal. And you'll feel it come loose and then just pull the computer straight back and it'll come right out from under the dash. Now on a manual transmission truck, this is going to be a little more difficult because you're going to have the clutch pedal in the way. Usually in that situation, what you want to do is have somebody step on the clutch pedal for you to get it out of the way before you remove the computer. Okay, so now that we've got the computer out of the truck, we're going to go ahead and slide it out of the case. This black plastic plug on the back of the computer is where our chip is going to go. In order to get the connector clean, we're going to have to go ahead and separate the case. To do that, we're going to remove these six small bolts on the front of the case. You can use your quarter inch drive ratchet, but a cordless drill might make things go a little faster. So we've got our bolts removed, we're going to go ahead and remove the top cover of the ECM. We can go ahead and remove the bottom cover as well. This connector is where your chip is going to plug on to. From the factory, this connector is coated in a layer of silicone. It is absolutely important that you get that silicone completely off of the connector. Otherwise, when you go to plug the chip on there, it could damage the computer or the chip itself. We're going to go ahead and use our piece of Scotch-Brite to go ahead and clean that silicone off of that connector. Now you want to be careful that you remove just the layer of silicone on there without removing any of the metal contacts on there. So we've got our connector clean now. When you clean the connector, you want to make sure that you do not take the metal down to where copper is showing. You want to make sure that you still have the silver on there. If you go down too far to where the copper is showing, you could actually end up with a connection issue between the chip and the computer itself. And the truck may not start when you install the chip. So we're going to go ahead and put our computer back together. Go ahead and put the back cover back on. Then go ahead and slide our front cover back on. And then go ahead and tighten down our bolts. So now we've got our computer back together. We're going to go ahead and slide it back in the case. You want to make sure as you're sliding it back in that the label on the computer is on the same side as the two mounting ears that bolt to the bracket underneath the dash. Just go ahead and slide it back in. Now our case, we've actually notched out the back of this so that we can access the port at any time without having to slide the case back off of it. You don't have to do that to install the chip, but it makes it easier if you ever have to remove the chip for any reason. With that done, we're going to go ahead and install this back in the truck. Now what we're going to do is install our optional USB cable. What this is going to allow us to do is program the chip without actually having to remove it from the computer. So we're going to go ahead and plug our USB cable into the chip like so, and then we're going to go ahead and strap it down with the zip tie. This will keep the cable from, from accidentally falling out or getting yanked out when you install the chip back into the computer. Go ahead and snug that down. Now we're going to go ahead and install this in the computer. Okay, so now that we've got our computer back together, we're going to go ahead and install our chip into the back of the computer. You're going to want to take your chip and make sure that the cable it's connected and runs over the top of the chip and that the large connector is on the bottom. So you'll take that, insert it into the computer, and then just plug the connector 
right onto the data port. Loop the cable over the back and we're ready to go back into the truck. Just take that, slip it right up under the dash, make sure that you line up the front connector with the hole in the firewall and just push it right in and it snaps right in. So now we're going to want to mount our, our switch and run our cable up underneath the dash. I like to mount the switch right up here, right next to the steering column, as it provides a good flat surface that's easy to see and not really in the way. To start with, we're going to go ahead and remove the lower panel underneath the dash. So next we're going to go ahead and pop the bottom of our instrument cluster bezel out so we can go ahead and run the wire up through here. So now we've got our cable run up underneath the instrument bezel here. We're going to go ahead and pull it out, make sure that we're not pinched anywhere. Then we're going to go ahead and attach the switch. Now the switch you want to make sure when you plug the connector in that the cable comes out the back side, like so. Then we'll go ahead and line it up and just go ahead and snap the instrument panel bezel back in place. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put our Velcro on now. Let's go ahead and Undo the one side, stick on the back, and go ahead and pull the sheet off the other side, and then light up the switch where you'd like to have it mounted, and press in place. All right, now we're going to go ahead and put our lower panel back on. Just slide it back up in place. We're going to go ahead and mount our USB cable adapter now. There's a couple of locations where you could mount it up here underneath the dash. My favorite location is actually to mount it underneath the steering column. This way it stays out of the way and doesn't get knocked off or bumped or anything. You can mount it in one of two ways. You can mount it using the small piece of Velcro that's supplied with it, or there's also two small mounting holes where you can use self-tapping screws. We're just going to go ahead and Velcro this up and attach it right underneath the steering column. So we're going to go ahead and get the connector back in the front of the computer here. Just line it right up, push it in, and you can usually go ahead and get the, the bolt started with your fingers. Now the bolt's going to pull the connector in, so you don't really have to force, force it in. Just go ahead, once you get the first couple of threads, get your ratchet back on, and then just go ahead and, and tighten it back up. Okay, so now that we've got the computer back in, the front connector back installed, and the chip installed, we're going to go ahead and do one final test to make sure that the, the, uh, the chip is functioning properly. Go ahead and put the key in the ignition, turn the key on, and look for the wait to start light and the service engine soon light to blink. If the wait to start light comes on and the service engine soon light blinks once and then shuts off, everything should be good to start. And there you have it. We've got our chip installed on our truck. Very easy process. Just take your time. Make sure that you clean the connector very well. And everything should go pretty easily. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about the installation or any of our products, please contact Power Hungry Performance at GoPowerHungry.com. Thank you.